So let's talk about the uh, structure of the head. Let's go back here for a second. So what I want to do now, well, what I want to do anywhere as an artist, and in this case for us as figurative artists, is I want to draw the simplest structure I can, structure or structure, uh, and yet make it as characteristic as possible. So it rings true right away. It's in about the right position, right proportion. The shape is something that I can simplify and refine, like uh, chiseling out clay to get something that rings ever more true, separating the big structures from the little structures. And we're starting in, uh, well, more than starting, but in this series, we've been looking at ever more little structures. And here we're going to come off the forehead and cheekbone and go to cheekbone and jaw. Uh, if you've been with me through summer all this series, you will have remembered how important I consider the eye socket. It's a natural corner for the face and oftentimes a tonal map, in this case the shadow shape, let's say. is going to show us how the front of the face separates from the side of the face. And what we'll notice is every, see, let me get that. Every form, unless it's blocked from receiving light that turns in this case to a side plane, I'll use this side is going to go light and all of the front planes are going to go dark. And so the front of the forehead is dark. The side of the face, including the ear, give or take its convolutions, are light. The front of the nose is dark and then it gets overlapped a little bit by the cheeks maybe, but the side of the nose is light. Front of the, no uh, front of the cheeks is dark. Side of the cheeks are dark. Forehead, I said cheek up here, but forehead. And likewise with the mouth and the jaw. So we can get that simple box logic and just assign a value or a range of value to a plane or a range of planes. And with a little bit of practice and a little bit of imagination, apply the same logic that we would do here that we could, as children with a little bit of practice, get a decent version. And notice, notice mine is at best only decent. It's not a great drawing, is it? But it still gives us the basic idea. And what we then do is assign a value or a set of values to each plane or set of planes. And the way I like to do it most is I make the dark, the shadows, all the shadows, whether it happens to be a front plane in this case and a bottom plane, like on the nose, like on the eye socket, like on the jaw, darker and ideally for simplicity's sake the same value and even the same color will make it kind of that here since i mucked around with a couple different colors not paying attention i can group all the shadows from all the light and in fairly fairly quick order i can make any or all forms simple or eventually not so simple, have a pretty good feel for a volume to them. Just by separating the foreground shape from the background environment, in this case kind of a non-environment because it's just a white paper, and then separating all the light from the shadow. And then as I get more skilled, I can make that um, shadow a soft edge and even if it's kind of a 
scumbly, painterly, crude job of filling it in. But with some practice, I can then add gradations over it, even if they're, again, fairly crude gradations. And get that idea pretty well of form. So it starts us on the road of a process that can eventually become very, very realistic. I mean, this is rendered, it's rendered in the computer, it's still rendered. And you can see the form turns with the value map around it. And you can see to some degree how how it gets darker on the front planes, lighter on the side, lighter on the top yet, darker on the bottom yet. So we can take this simple road and move into immense sophistication from this or this to this and this. So one of the things I want to do is get a sense of how these basic structures fit together at the simplest level, because simpler is easier than complicated. So I'm going to make the simplest possible statements I can, but still have it kind of ring true. So let's look at that head again. And what I want to do is learn to eventually draw that head from any particular position and see those structures. So if we uh, start with a, a three quarter view, I'm going to draw just a real simple mask of the face. I'm going to get a center line that bisects the features. I'm going to get an eyebrow line and an eye line I'll get a little bit of the skull. I can make it rounder or more boxy or more tubular or, or, or however I choose to think of it. And I can kind of test out. And with some practice, you'll get your own best choices. With some practice, you'll get better at position and proportion. But it doesn't have to be nailed. That puts too much pressure. It just has to be generally characteristic of what I see. Good enough. And then with practice or another attempt, I can make it a little better, a little better, a little better. But what I want to do is get the overall feeling of the front of the face the top of the head, really the skull, and the side of the face, side of the skull. And with a little bit of uh, mileage and understanding, craft understanding, and maybe even emotional understanding <laughs> sometimes, because it can be a challenge. We can correct things so they feel better to us, more true to that portrait we're doing or that ideal that we've imagined or whatever, and make adjustments. But anywhere in there is fine. I don't, I don't want to get too fussy about the details. I can always change them. So better or worse. going to be good enough. And then if I can think of that eye line or the eyebrow line in relationship to the ear, I start to get a sense of, again, that box logic. Eyebrow to ear. And it can be a little Lego man 
or it can be a quite sophisticated, relatively sophisticated mannequin or whatever, like so. And what I want to do is find landmarks on the face so that I can call out corners because a box is not a box unless it has corners. The more corners we have, the more structure we have. So we know what's front, what's side, what's top, what's bottom, give or take what we can see. Those corners also break the whole silhouette into smaller and smaller segments that are easier and easier to measure. And so the more little details, the eye socket or the eye glasses, the uh, ear in relationship to the back of the head in relationship to the front of the face, marking off the features gives me more and more information to make me more and more sure of my choices. And mileage helps tremendously. And then like a sculptor, chiseling things off and maybe still keeping the box, but now a more nuanced, more sophisticated version gets a little better yet, a little better yet. Maybe I'll do something with the top of the head, maybe not, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna look for landmarks. One of the landmarks, of course, is right down through the, the features, the center line, the natural center line there. You might see the part of the hair or the widow's peak picking up on that. It doesn't have to be exactly right. It can be a little off. You can adjust it later, move that widow peak back or feel the slope back from brow to forehead and so on. Just ballpark. You can refine it as you go. And then I'm going to use the eyebrows and whatever natural arch they have. They don't always have an arch. Mine don't, but they usually do. And it just has to be ballpark again, anywhere in there. And I'll use that as the natural corner. And then the eyebrows usually descend down. They don't always do, but they usually do. The eye line can be a construction line across. And that's a good convenient place to pick out where the temple is, which is where the side of the head is for our box logic. And I can refine that later. I can add in corner planes. There could be a corner plane here before it becomes a full side plane or this way. This could be another corner plane before it becomes a front plane. You can make it ever more nuanced. And I'm thinking of clay and I'm chiseling out the facets or wood, I'm carving out the blocky facets. Eventually I'll round it around. But I wanna have a sense that the forehead is narrower than the cheeks. Because the cheeks have to push out as created by the eye sockets to create this kind of donut effect where we have this armor of bone, this ring of support that sticks out to protect. So if it's struck, it's protected. And then the, the all, all important eyes, very hard to survive in a primitive wild world without our eyes. Those eyes are relatively protected. We have a better chance to survive. And we can see that ring, that donut-like ring. Wrapping around where the eyeball would sit in there and then jutting back. Bone does two things. It protects it protects something that's fragile, vulnerable. Protects something that's armors up, protects something that's fragile and vulnerable, or eye or brain. Or it juts out or 
bridges across as a supporting structure for muscle, something to have muscle attach on to. So you can see this jaw goes back and we have these articulating muscles for expressions and for mastication chewing. The masseter muscles, the temporalis muscles. And then we might get some fat deposit over the muscles. We'll certainly get the skin over the muscles, um, all that kind of stuff. So we start very simply. And as we can break that down, notice as we get more sophisticated in our understanding of the pieces, the ever smaller pieces and position of those pieces, then again, we can break down the proportions and be a little more confident of the decision-making and then refine that decision-making by adding smaller pieces or refining the big pieces and so on. So we have this, I think of goggles, ski goggles or motorcycle goggles. And those eye sockets span over. The bone structure spans over the whole of both eyes. The brow ridge that pushes out with bone and muscles, actually a little thicker bone there to protect, a little thicker bone around the orbit to protect this little thin bridge to attach the jaw muscles to. And then the nose, which we'll look at another time. The nose that separates. So I think of that brow ridge is one big structure of goggles across. It's split by the the muzzle, uh, well, the nose at the muzzle over there. And then uh, eventually, I'll usually think of those as separating a little bit with the furrowed brow, with the separate sockets, any or all those things. So that's a little bit of the anatomy. But the main lesson I want to learn before that anatomy, because the anatomy is a lot to hold, it's complicated, and it doesn't have any purpose unless we give it purpose. It just is. It's biology. So until we give it some purpose, some aesthetic reason for being, it's beautiful structures, or its structure itself, or its gesture itself. It's a beautiful way of showing the box logic beautiful way of showing the connective strategy, whatever that is, uh, it can get in the way and give us trouble if we can't give it meaning. So what I really want, whether I'm thinking of things out of my head as simple structures, as I'm separating anatomy and lighting schemes uh, from the real world on the paper, whatever it is, what I really want to know is just back to corners. What's on the front plane? And what's on the side plane? We'll feel the forehead come down, forehead push out, the, che the cheek push forward, and then drop down. And then drop down and usually push forward for the narrow chin, narrowest part of the face. So whatever I'm going to use, 
mannequin ideas, chiseled contour ideas like you get in an atelier, design ideas of just imposing eggs everywhere like a Renaissance artist, structural ideas, thinking of boxes in perspective with planes that catch value, laws of light theory, whatever it is. What I really want through all of that is corners. And if it doesn't have a, a fairly sophisticated set of corners, it's going to be disappointing. Notice how disappointing that is if after all that work, I just have a true box for all of the front plane and a true box for all the side plane and no nuance. It just doesn't feel right. But if I can start thinking of it a little more nuanced, then I can be closer to the truth, closer to the finish of what's on the front and what's on the side. So that takes a while to get to. A great way to do it, and we'll do it in a second, is to take something more sophisticated, photo reference, a favorite drawing or painting, ecorche reference, whatever it is, and actually construct these simple solids on it. But all I'm really after is the corner between the plane. There's a plane or a bunch of planes here. There's a plane or a bunch of planes here. When do they separate? When do they change direction? When do they get fatter? When do they get longer? When do they get narrower? Those kind of things. So if I go back to a simple version in profile like we started with, what I want to keep in mind, and again, it takes some practice, is I want to keep in mind that the eye socket, if I can imagine and see the bone, or if I can just look at the eyebrows, the hair of the eyebrows, and where roughly where the lower lids meet the cheek, or where the cheek gets widest, anywhere in there. Doesn't have to be exactly right. It'll be good enough. If it's not good enough, I can change it later. So I can use the eye socket to show that nuance. Or I can use the eyebrow Or I can use some value pattern I see to show the nuance. And so I'm looking for is the top of the eye socket based on my anatomical understanding of the bone, based on me seeing hairy eyebrows. That's the top of the socket where the cheekbone ends at the bags of the lower lid, at the pinch of the lower lid, at the widest part before it falls back on the cheek, anywhere in there. Finding that. And I just push it forward, drop it down. So it ends up being some version of a zigzag. Top of the socket, bottom of the socket, going down or going down and forward or going down straight or going down and back. Any or all of those, any one, and probably not all of those, but any of those, good enough. That's going to be the corner of the whole head. And then from that arch of the eyebrow, we're going to go up towards the hair. And if we could see it, the part, side part of the hair, or the temple, or the close to the top of the forehead, of uh, top of the skull, anywhere in, the, in there. I got room to screw up. I don't have to get it precise. Anywhere in there. Now I've separated all of the front plane from all the side plane just with a zigzag. And when I do my marks, I don't like to do straight lines for very long. I like to make those straight lines change pretty quick. 
or I like to make those straight lines be more curved or S curved. So I don't usually like to do zigzags like that. I actually pre prefer to do zigzags like that. Or zigzags like that. Notice it could, that zigzag could do a lot of things and it would be okay. It'd be good enough. And I could always change it with a little bit of practice. I can learn to change it into something a little better. Notice that's quite different than what we had before, but it works fine. And if it really bothers me, I can trim it back. I can reverse a curve. I can lengthen that curve with a little bit of practice. But I want to see that eyebrow, let's get to another one, that eyebrow, arching eyebrow, just a simplification of it. The cheekbone, somewhere below at the base of that baggy lower lid. And wherever that baggy lower lid is, I usually push the, notice I've pushed this out from the lower lid. You can see there's a little bit of space, a little bit of space between where the lower lid ends and where that corner of the cheek is, because I know it's wider, so I push it out that way. And I'd rather it's a little too wide because the cheek is the widest part of the face. I'd rather it's too wide than too narrow. So with a little bit of practice, I learn which way to screw up. Better make those cheeks wider, better to make the forehead narrower. And then just practice and play. Does that feel better or worse? Now I extend that zigzag. Zigzags, not as dramatically, but it's zig zigzags up towards the top of the skull. It zigzags, not as dramatically, but it zigzags down towards the front of the chin or down, or down and back towards the back of the jaw, for that chewing muscle. And I don't know after what, I don't have to know what it is. If it's not visible, I don't have to use it. If it is visible, I don't have to use it. But I'm going to draw a bunch of times and play with those variations. And just look for those zigzags. And I can add little zigzags for the little forms or stick with the big zigzags for the big forms and feel that all the way down. And then when we get that zigzagging down, as we start to move towards a three quarter to a front view, we realize that that zig that 
sig down is a push out, pushing out this way. We do it on time. Uh, done, but let's take this a little farther. Let me check our chat, see if we're good. Yeah, Terrace Major loves uh, Harold Speed's uh, Practice of Science and Drawing. It's a lovely book. Um, it's a little dry for some folks, but it's uh, it's an amazing book. Uh, so I'm glad you, you like that and find some commonality between what I do and what he did, because I stole a lot from him. He had some, a lot of good things to say. Um, and I should say, if you want to support us, Tell some friends, have them join us. I don't know what we have today. Usually we have 70, 80, sometimes well over 100. Uh, but a lot of folks, I love having you. Tell your friends, spread the news, spread the, the fun. Uh, the more, the better. We want a big community here that we can support each other with and share ideas with. So I'd love that. That would be, be the best thing you could do is a little thank you if you want to. Uh, it's all free. It always will be. If you want to support, I have a Patreon channel. It's at uh, patreon.com forward slash draws from life. You can do that. And then I have a high end coaching program, meaning high end, meaning put a lot more time in. We, we work together, uh, the clients and I, al along with my team on one on one group coaching and high end in terms of it's expensive. It's more like a college education, like the cost of a semester in college, which is a lot and too much for most people. Uh, but for the few people who love doing that, I love working with them in a closer way than I can uh, in this format. But anyway, those are my my uh, little um, pitches there and no pressure at all. The main thing is that you're here and we're having, I hope, fun together. So what I want to do then is learn to draw this head in all sorts of positions with a very peculiar, particular, and somewhat nuanced boxy thinking. So notice if the eyebrow goes this way, I want the bottom of the box at the chin to go that way. Notice it doesn't quite and it doesn't converge into a, a linear perspective. Good enough, because it's organic. We'll fix it if it doesn't look like later, later, look good later. We'll refine the contour of that chin so it's more nuanced with the jaw. So it's just getting at ballpark and then coming back and refining things. Maybe I'll move that ear back. Maybe I'll raise that ear up. Is that better or worse? If I draw a light, I can get a little darker later on and move that ear or whatever. And I want to get a sense of the big structures, the front of the forehead, just very simply, the top of the head, just very simply. Notice I just simply correcting. If it's not as good, I'll go back to when it was better and just make my decisions. Try and make that cheek a little wider. I like to throw some shading on it just so I can separate visually more strongly than the the sketchy lines of the construction drawing to feel if that feels like a front plane.
and just work it out step by step. And then feel the same ideas out in the real world. There is, let's see here, there is the eye socket. Right here. Right here. And then it drops down to the mouth and the chin. It drops down to the mouth and the chin. It pulls back to that clenched jaw. And I can kind of play with how far it goes back. And again, which way it curves, how it curves back. Is that better? Or worse? Better or worse? I can keep changing my mind. Is it better or worse? Better or worse? And just keep playing with it. Boy, I like it nice and clean, forward facing. Maybe this is a little too narrow. As I start playing with the better and the worse, I start getting a clearer, more refined palette understanding of what I'm seeing. And I can make those corrections. It will make it better yet. Maybe <clears throat> more nuanced choices. They can make it better yet. And I can always change my mind. But I like that better, even wider. I like this pulling back just a little bit before it goes down to suggest that, and so on. Just playing with the possibilities. Looking at the rich world for inspiration. <clears throat> and distilling down and maybe using all of these. I'm going to go swing back, zygomatic arts, zing, zing down the masseter muscle, ding, zing down the jowls as they meet the barrel of the mouth, come straight down the mouth to the, the front bump of the chin, come forward under the nose, loop back around into the eye socket like a spiral, Pull forward this way, no pull forward that way, no pull this way, no pull this way, no come back up here and pull that way. Notice how I can 
look for these structures. Super simple, which is still hard. And work it out front plane to side, front plane to side, front plane to side, front plane to side, all the way through. And then I can think of it as just pure energy, how it's going to flow from one thing to the other. And at first, not know what to do with that, but just realize that I can break things down with several pathways. Simple box logic. So I'm going to practice drawing the head like it's a box that gets ever more nuanced, maybe, with lots of choices, maybe. And then I'll do exactly the same thing. But instead of a box, I'll do something more egg-like. See if I like that better. I was already using a little bit of eggs before. Now I'm going to use more eggs and play with that. I don't like going with just the eggs because everything's so rounded. You're not quite sure where the front ends and the side begins. And so it gets, it gets kind of loopy and you start to lose where things separate and how to attach tones. If things are a little boxier, then I can say, oh, that's all dark or this is all lighter and be ballpark correct. But I do like to draw eggs to feel the roundness and boxes to feel the squareness and the cornerness and then kind of combine them together. It'll be an egg, but maybe there's a slight corner where the front of the egg meets the side of the egg. It'll be an egg, but maybe there's a slight corner where the top of the egg meets the front of the egg, meets the corner of the egg. And I can chisel out the egg. I can round off the box and combine them between. Okay, so that's kind of a, a uh, preamble to working out the structures of the cheeks and the jaws. We'll come back next week and we'll dig in uh, much deeper and see where that takes us.